the interior of a conference room with a dozen messages and a pink floor. A middle-aged woman, about 45 to 50 years old, wearing a pink dress. On the legs, flesh-colored, semi-transparent tights and imitation leather or cream leather heels. The position of the left foot slightly taken out of the shoe is dominant here. Biocomputers based on human brain cells. Scientists working with organoids of the human brain presented their ideas for the development of biocomputers based on nerve cells. Such technology could not only greatly extend the capabilities of modern computers, but also open up new fields of research. Organoids are lab-grown tiny versions of various organs that retain key anatomical features of full-size organs. Such three-dimensional models are an invaluable aid in research where the use of living brains or kidneys is impossible or unethical. Scientists obtain a living organ to test different concepts. This includes, for example, testing reactions to drugs or observing development in unfavorable conditions. Research on organoids gives scientists the opportunity to gain a deeper understanding of organs and understand the causes of many diseases. Thomas Hartung of Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore and his team have been working with the organoids of the human brain for years. Their mini brains about the size of a mustard seed. But with neurons and other features that promise to sustain basic functions like learning and memory. Hartung began growing organoids in 2012, creating them from cells from human skin samples reprogrammed into a state similar to embryonic stem cells. Each such organoid contains about 50,000 different types of cells. Now, Hartung and colleagues at the University of San Diego and the University of Luxembourg have come up with the idea of creating a biocomputer that would run on the organoids of the human brain. Despite all the technological progress, the biggest competitor for processes is still the biological brain. While silicon-based computers are undoubtedly very fast and far better at numbers, Human brains are still better at learning. For example, an artificial intelligence called AlphaGo, which beat the best human Go player in 2017, trained its skills on the basis of data from as many as 160,000 games. If a man were to learn in the same way and analyze all this data, assuming that he would spend five hours a day on it, he would need, only, 175 years to play that many games. So why shouldn't we use the potential of our brains? Scientists in a recently published paper suggested the possibility of growing mini-brains in the laboratory, which would then be linked together, thus creating an extremely powerful biocomputer. So far, organoids have been used for medical purposes, such as research into microcephaly and diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. On the other hand, they were taught to play classic computer POM. There is even a term to distinguish this type of intelligence from human and artificial intelligence, organoid intelligence. Important in the context of their potential use is the fact that they have a similar type of cells that enable the human brain to collect and remember information. It should be emphasized that we are getting closer and closer to the point where we can no longer improve our computers. It will simply be impossible to stuff even more transistors into one chip. And here organoids may appear on the scene. It is estimated that the human brain is able to remember 2,500 terabytes of information. In addition, neural connections are of a completely different nature than those we observe in computers. However, science may run into a potentially insurmountable barrier here, the ethical one. The number of neurons in organoids that were created for research purposes was quite limited. If they were to be used to create a biocomputer, 
it would be necessary to increase their number to even 10 million. And here is the problem, because the question may arise as to how aware it would become of its existence. Weeds. Outlaw plants. Weeds are plants unwanted by farmers or gardeners in their crops. They often compete with desirable species for light, water and nutrients and can deplete crops by up to 50%. However, these plants are often valuable for various reasons and it is worth looking at them differently, especially on March 28th on Weed Appreciation Day. March 28th is World Weed Appreciation Day. But what is a weed? English writer Richard Maybe, in his book Weeds, in defense of nature's most unloved plants, defined weeds as plants that interfere with our plans or our orderly maps of the world. The difference between weeds and what might be called respectable plants is not so much botanical as it is the result of human evaluations of their value. Weeds grow where they are unwanted and displace plants that are valuable to us for various reasons, such as crops and flowers. They often disfigure meticulously designed gardens. Richard Maybe calls weeds, intruders, vegetable gorillas, and outlaws, what are weeds characterized by. They germinate quickly, have an accelerated development cycle spread more easily and effectively. They can also lie dormant for a very long time and germinate when the conditions are right. One example is weed species that have not been seen for decades and have grown in the rubble left after the German bombing of London during World War II. Even more remarkable are the recent archaeological excavations where, among other things, weed seeds that have started to germinate and some of them are even 2,000 years old. We should remember that weeds, having lived so close to us for hundreds of years, have often been a blessing as well. It was weeds that were the first crops, the first medicines, and many dishes were prepared from them. Without looking far, sorrel soup, salad with young nettles or dandelions, and many more examples could be given in favor of weeds. There is also forest chervil, Anthriscus sylvestris L, which has become a fashionable decoration of spring weddings, and the material invented by George de Mestrel in 1941 Velcro. It is a registered trademark for a fabric commonly referred to as Velcro, which was inspired by burdocks, Arctium L. Weeds are relentless and can adapt to conditions where other plants cannot thrive. One could say that they deserve admiration for their persistence in adapting to their environment and for the clever ways in which they do so. But more and more you can hear about superweeds. Superweeds are spreading from continent to continent and are terrifying not only with the destructive presence in the environment and the lack or very limited possibilities of combating them, but in some cases also with very large, even grotesque sizes. In the realities of our country, such a weed was certainly Sosnovsky hogweed, Heracleum Sosnovsky, or Canadian goldenrod, Solidago canadensis. As you can see, the role of weeds can be very diverse. It is therefore worth looking at these plants differently from time to time, especially on March 28th on Weed Appreciation Day.